We'll come to the order. Welcome everyone. South Conservation Commission meeting. It is Monday, October 21st, 2024, 7 p.m. We are in hybrid the Suffolk Town Hall. Uh, with us tonight, we have Andy Reardon, Chris Pratt, Norm Cheever, Kevin Solick. Okay. Uh, does anybody have any public comment? Okay, anyone online public comment? Like it. Nope. Okay, we'll move on. We do have a few minutes. We we'll get the minutes taken care of first. We we'll got the minutes for October 7th. I just had a couple of grammatical corrections. Okay. The 55 Foster Road. Mark Stinson. Not spelled correctly. Stinson, not Stinson. So S T I S S T I. Yeah. In the Final decision by the commission was to create an order of conditions with supposed to be conservation restriction. It's just con consecutive restriction. Mm -hmm. Spell check. <laughs> well, spell check wouldn't have fixed that. That's what I'm saying. Didn't add that. I don't find the spell check, right? Yeah. <laughs> I don't have it in front of me, but I thought there was something in there kind of grammatical about the um, snow fence. On there. Just didn't seem, I know what the intent was, like you wanted the snow fence and everything else up, but the way it reads, I thought was um, So um, just try to find it and let Julie know. It's in that same mm -hmm. paragraph. Uh, My limitations is in place. So 55 Foster? Hmm. Uh, should be monumentations are in place. Mon monumentations are is maybe in place before work begins or in snow fencing. So I understand it. Monument monuments and orange snow fencing are in place before work begins. Right? Would be one of the restrictions as mm -hmm. well as installing installation <laughs> of drywalls. <clears throat> Double sub and A wheels. Um, on 24 and 26 Nicholson Hill, it says that I know we thought that they were switching to a single family home, but is that I thought it was still going to be a two family. It is a family, okay. two family. Yes. Yeah. So we could probably just emit that whole part, right? I would because it says the revision will change the project from a two family to a one family, but. I think we talked about that. We right. thought that that was the case, but I think that then they corrected us that it's still going to be a two family. So we could just probably just um, like, just that delete that, that out. Seconds? I would say so, yeah. Well, I thought we went yeah. to a single family on that. Uh, I, think we thought, sense, right? I thought we thought that, but oh, I think it's still right. going to be a two family. We'll find out when they submit the new NOI. I'm pretty sure, though, because <laughs> I think we thought because they were moving it up to the upper a lot, and that's why we thought it was going to be it. But I thought that just eliminate that sentence and we'll yeah, figure, we'll figure it, out. it out. I mean, I don't know if it's critical. I think you're right. Though. Yeah, we don't actually don't even need that in there. Yeah, but I think that either way. Nice. <clears throat> that's just the relocation part. Is the revision that we were looking at. See what how it uh, works in with the uh, wetland area, whether it's a one family or two, has no bearing in the decision. So, um, you mentioned the the soap fence, double soap fence, or reinforced soap fence with hay bales or straw bales for fifty five foster. Were you saying that? Yeah, and that was part of the conditions. I think it'd be a good idea to put it that as part of the conditions. Yeah. It's just a silk fence doesn't really provide a lot of protection. The hay bale and silk fence is better, but having a double silk fence with a hay bale is. Okay. But we're going to talk about that. Later. Yeah, right, yeah, right. okay. All right, yeah. Yeah, so yeah. the minutes right now. Thanks. Minutes. <laughs> Okay. 
Okay. Nothing else. I'll take a motion when somebody's ready. No, the report from the Southfield presentation on LPP is. Yes, it was hard for me to catch in. I'm trying to write it now. <laughs> Sorry. Um, You don't do the minutes later, Norm, so you don't have to I, rush it. I, I can, I can. I don't want you to have to rush or... Yeah, we yeah. can vote on it later. Okay. We can, let's, let's we can put that. them off and go to our hearings and come yeah. back to it. Well, we do that. Yeah. Okay. No problem. <laughs> All right. <clears throat> so we can go to our first hearing. Uh, we have an NOI number 292-0423 Tannery Road, proposed construction. Oh, here, I'll read it up here. South the Conservation Commission will hold a public hearing of the Massachusetts Wetland Protection Act, General Law C 131, Section 40 of the South the Conservation Commission Regulations and Bylaw, Chapter 182, and Chapter 450 for notice of intent via a hybrid meeting, Zoom, and in person. The project location is Tannery Road, South of Mass, 01077, map 020, parcel 006-000. The applicant proposes the construction of a single family dwelling with the associated site improvements. Portions of the proposed work are within the buffer zone. Hey, Christopher Pratt, Chair of the Commission. Okay. All right, hello everyone. Ryan Nelson from Arlo Vec Associates. Can everyone hear me? Yeah, all right. Hello. All right. So this property um, was Mr. Chet Saborski's. He, uh, a few years ago, he built the house off of Concord Road over here. And recently, uh, through A&R, subdivided this frontage parcel off of Tannery Road. Um, this delineation was updated about a year or two ago when we did the perk tests on the property, which were successful. Um, so you can see there's a 50 foot buffer zone right here offset from this wetland boundary. That was the main constraint for this property. Um, we got a house design based on a prospective buyer uh, that's interested in the property. Um, the dimensions of this house fitting with staying within that 50 foot buffer zone, no touch. Um, so we, we think we're able to <clears throat> make everything work without going inside the 50 foot buffer. Typical site improvements, paved driveway, septic would be offset over here. Uh, reserve area would be in the front. Well would be in the back. You can see this uh, swiggly line is the existing tree line. So the majority of the project is taking place within an already uh, mode meadow area there's a little bit of clearing up front that would occur uh, same with over here near the septic system so this would be work within the buffer zone only happy to answer any questions Ryan, from the bottom note number one it says each site entrance, I can't read the rest of it because it's so small. Could you explain that one, please? Is more than one site entrance? Uh, no, that's just a typical note we have. Some sites have more than one, but this only has one entrance. Okay. Do we want to do a site visit on this one? I think we should probably do a site visit on this one. Um, yeah, we were out there before for the house that was put not far from there, right, Ryan? They did a. That's my house. Okay. Which one is your house? Yeah, eight hundred. That was how many years ago was that? Well, oh, it's only four years ago. Yeah. Oh. Okay. Do you have any comments or concerns as the butters or? It's my property. So you don't have any comments or concerns. I'd be more than happy to see a house. Then. Okay. <laughs> I'm just going to read some uh, comments from DEP. 
residing in a single family house located on the original parcel, the street address of 8 Concord Road. So you're, you're dividing the property? Yes. Okay. Um, from a practical point of view, is there enough room for equipment to maneuver around the foundation in that buffer zone area? I know Ryan said probably. I mean, it's probably good. I don't know. Um, we've had previous projects like this. Um, in this instance, uh, you wouldn't have like a conventional, you know, work pad around the back of the foundation where your concrete truck would drive. In this case, you would need to have to pump it uh, for that back foundation wall to construct it. But um, I think under constructed conditions, there's like a four foot clearance um, from that pinch point at the back left corner of the house. Okay. You can maybe put that in order conditions or something. All right. Just a point of uh, interest here. It looks like the entire house, the septic system, and the well are all in the 100, 100 foot buffer zone, 100%. Correct. Right. That's why they have to file a notice of intent. Yeah. But I know when we went out there and looked at the site before, Kellogg Brook is way in the back. A thousand feet back. Hmm? At least a thousand feet. A thousand feet back. But I know that. Whole area had been disturbed many years ago. They were going to put a subdivision back there originally. They were going to extend that Concord Road subdivision on my driveway as was going to be a street. And so that actually, that wetland is actually a created drainage area drainage by Solinsky. Which they put in there. The subdivision. Are those, is that still in there? A lot of drainage that was uh, put in? You mean like the soil, the soil was created by them. So that's what the, the wetland is now. And then I have a uh, storm drain that runs through the side of my property down to the water. Right, that's still active. That's still oh, yeah. active. They, uh, um, they've come out and inspected it a few times because I have a uh, a storm drain on the side of my area. I would like to take a look at it okay. just for due diligence. Yeah, so I would agree. We also should probably mention the possible violation. Okay, it says did that. Uh, so the commission should review aerial photos over time as it appears that clearing occurred either in the wetlands or very near the wetlands soon after construction started on that house. And I'll just bring up some aerial imagery identifying that if I can figure out how this works with my computer. Was there a certificate of compliance issued on your house, the original one? Yeah. Okay. Right, so we have 2008, and let me just try to share via Zoom. <clears throat> and share my screen. So this is the image in 2008, I think. After it starts up on yeah, 2008. And then we'll have an <clears throat> 2017 right here. Let me see if I can get this side by side. Oh, oh, that's nice. How about let's try? Let's just try this. Drag it over. So 2008 to. 2017, there's some clearing here. And then right here is the wetland line. Right here. But was it wet wetland in 2017? This, um, yes. So, so the, may I say something? Yep. The picture that you're looking at here is the edge of my yard. So you're looking at the back of, of my yard right here. Mm -hmm. The lot is over there. Right. The lot that we're talking about. Right, but 8 Concord is still technically contains the lot that we're talking about today. Yes. So that's why looking, I wanted to bring it up. We're looking at my lot right now. Yep, 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 yep. Well, they're both your lots. Yeah. I'll, yeah. The whole thing is one parcel at the moment, right? Yes. Yep. So this, again, this is 2008. 2017 and then let me so here's a delineation let me get the date for that delineation 
that was we did in 16 2016 yes so it was delineated 2016 and the 2017 photo was after it so it appears there's some clearing either in the wetland or very close to the wetland. And I did talk to Ryan about this and asked him to um, check the flagging. I think I did. If I didn't, Ryan, please just pipe up. Um, so what, when we do a site visit, we can go out and have a look at that as well. Okay. Does anybody have any time this week? It'll be nice fun. Yes, any time is good time. Okay, four o'clock. Right. Any any day. The only day that I would be available early is tomorrow. <laughs> yeah, we have a site visit tomorrow at three. That's too early for me. Well, you won't be going. I mean, you can if you want. <laughs> um, but that's for his certificate of compliance. Okay, so after so that, four so four tomorrow. Four tomorrow work. I yep. can't make tomorrow. Oh, we can only we don't need everybody there anyway. I mean, four of us would have to not be able to talk about anything. Yeah, that would be a quorum. I can make it. Okay. And I said I usually can't make a lot of them. I could. Okay. Do this one. All right. Why well, don't we say tomorrow four o'clock? That'll make it nice and quick. I have yeah. a conflict at that time, but the commission's welcome Aww. to go ahead. All right. <laughs> You want to meet without Ryan, or I think we should probably have him there. I'd look yeah. Somebody you can send it in your place, right? Um, no one that's familiar with it. So when can you make it, Ryan? Uh, literally any other day or time this week, but tomorrow at four. <laughs> How about Wednesday? Wednesday at four. We'll go through all the days. I'm good. Wednesday's good. Dennis, how about you? Mark, can you make I it? can make Wednesday. Okay. Why don't we switch ours to Wednesday? Yep, yeah, Wednesday's good. We can do that. Okay, we'll do Wednesday. Okay. Wednesday, four o'clock. Okay, okay Ryan. Yes, thank you. All right. Yeah. Number 10, are you what was that? Is there a number for it? I don't, I don't think there's a number yet. Um, six or seven? Like what's it next to? Or... It's called 67. Okay. 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 I look for your truck. <laughs> okay. So we're going to be looking for a continuation on this. So, well, they, they have to make the continuation okay. right? requests. Correct. Seeking a continuance to allow for a site visit. Yep. Okay. And that will be to the next meeting, which will be we have a date for that yet? Yes. November 4th. November 4th. November. Paper for continuance for November 4th. Okay. Make a motion on the continuance. I'll make a motion to continue. No second. All in favor? Andy aye. Chris aye. Norm aye. Kevin aye. Kevin aye. All right. See you on. Well, we'll see Ryan on Wednesday. Anybody else on the fourth? Okay. I'll be here. Okay. Wednesday. Okay. Super. Sure. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you. Appreciate Thank you coming you. in. Yeah. All right. Did you uh, check on that certificate of compliance, Sabrina, for the, the house? Yeah. Check on that for us, too. I, I believe it was an RDA at the time. Oh, so there was no certificate of compliance. Mm. Okay. The house was. 
incentive and set further away. Okay, we'll move on to our next notice of intent. Beating Hills Road. Number 306. Here. Thank you. Okay, so this was a continuation Maybe from Ryan. Ryan. I'm just going to read the uh, notice. We are right. No worries. Um, so this is a continuation sure. from last time. Um, we were trying to sort through some old stream data that um, didn't have good records of to repurpose. So we figured we'd just go out to the stream on this property and get new uh document documentate uh sorry four days documentation uh four days of the stream being uh not flowing so the stream uh starts up here we started farther off site um so that there wouldn't be a 200 foot riverfront clipping the property uh so we went beyond the property lines started here at bank 100 and we took video on october 8th the 9th the 11th and the 14th, showing the stream dry and not flowing, um, all the way to the culvert headwall on the north side of Route 57. There was a segment of the stream, uh, maybe between like Bank 130 and 128, that did have some uh, standing stagnant water in it. But we took some close up videos and monitored that. And you could see with the leaf litter on the water, that the water wasn't moving at all and it wasn't connected upstream or downstream. It was just a little isolated pool. Um, the wetlands adjacent to the stream are the same. So essentially uh, we are petitioning the stream to be intermittent based on our observations of four days in a calendar year. The point at which we could not observe the stream to be not flowing uh, starts at the culvert headwall. Downstream of the culvert, the stream uh, had plenty of water in it and was flowing. Um, we were unable to determine the status within the culvert. Um, the culvert's less than 200 feet, so it gets treated as bank, and riverfront would start uh, from that point at the culvert headwall on the upstream side. So in that scenario, uh, our 200-foot riverfront is drawn as a semicircle from that point, which puts that line right here, and no proposed work is located within riverfront. The only work within uh, wetland jurisdiction is one of these septic leach fields, which would be in the 50 to 100 foot buffer zone in the rear right corner of the parcel. Um, we submitted through OneDrive to Sabrina the stream videos, uh, affidavits. Um, the conditions while we were out there have been similar to today, warm, sunny, and dry. Um, I do think on the 14th, it was of October, uh, that was a Monday, and we had a rain, I think it was last Saturday, and despite that rain, uh, the stream conditions were the same. Um, so happy to answer any questions regarding any of that. I thought that the determination had to be made when we're not in a drought condition. Are we not in a drought condition? We are not. We are not. Not yeah. technically. Right. I can't water my lawn. I thought we were. <laughs> and, um, so uh, the way we, the town, says drought is different than the state says drought. We go off of, I think, the Westfield River uh, height. Um, but we've been out there before yeah. when this came in, and it's never been a stream. Right. It's just on those maps, perennial you're stream. familiar with it, they're all, all perennial, perennial streams. <laughs> <laughs> yep. They're all perennial <laughs> Mm -hmm. So do we have to make a determination on that or just on the notice of intent? So the water starts somewhere under the road is what Ryan is saying? Yes, because at some, some point, I don't know if it's road drainage um, or just the elevation change. It seems like the downstream side of the, uh, of the road is probably sitting in groundwater more than the upstream side. Um, really more... wasn't any surface flows to attribute to it for that water to be there. 
is there rating associated to the septic systems? Um, and if so, how much of an impact would that have on the outer 100? Uh -huh. Very little. So groundwater was pretty deep and the soils were good. So if you look, existing grade is between 103 and 104 where the perk tests were done and finished grade over the septic is 104. So we're filling half a foot. Okay. And then it looks like that he wants to, or the applicant wants to remove some trees in the buffer, like mm -hmm. right below that. Um, yeah, right in this area, and that's to provide a buffer around the leach field so no true uh, tree roots interfere with it. Okay. It's already been cleared, right? That was cleared a long time ago. Well, they're, they're the existing conditions are in the light gray. Yep. So you can see the squiggly line. So they're gonna they're gonna take back um, the tree line a little bit. Small chunk in here is coming out. It, yeah, exactly. And all across and the back around the corner. Yeah. Right. And that's a big empty lot that's been empty for years up there, right? Yeah. The chimney used to stand there. It used to be a chimney there, yeah. yeah. It was a restaurant at one time. Was it an auction yeah. place at one time? Mm -hmm. A restaurant, place. I thought. Yeah. <laughs> back in the 50s. <laughs> Before me. Sure. Nice. It'll be nice to see that filled up. Yeah. You guys okay. want any monumentation or in the 50 foot? So, do we need to vote on both? Or? Yes. I think we vote on the delineation and the uh, stream stats mm -hmm. and then on the projects as separate. Mm -hmm. right, you don't have to close the hearing first. We vote on it. And well, we'll close the hearing for the um, NOI part. But I think as far as the stream goes, I don't think we have to close the hearing. The math, I was asking you. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> You're the one I always ask. <laughs> Sabrina? <laughs> well, Ryan, <laughs> Ryan, what do you what do you want us to do? <laughs> Why don't we close the hearing? Yeah, I would close the hearing and close the hearing. Yeah. Okay. I'll yeah. second it. All in favor? Andy, aye. Chris, aye. Norm, aye. Evan, aye. Dennis, aye. Okay. So we can do both together here now. Okay. Makes sense. All right. So as far as the stream stats go, I think Ryan's proven that it's intermittent. I mean, um, even though in the Wetland Protection Act it does say that you're supposed to be some uh, field notes, Ryan. Ryan, just give me the field notes. You just you <laughs> just send them over. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Just so we I can put that pen, pending on pending uh, field notes, which would be just adding in like dates, times it was observed, conditions it was observed under. I mean, you just told us a little bit out loud. Yeah, basically what you just So if you told it, you know, just write those things in as field notes, I think that would suffice. Okay. If it, it doesn't have to be that, you know, that twice, detailed. The, yeah. Beginning of each video has a post postcard or index yeah. card with the information i don't know if that's good enough yeah, but but I can... those are hard, yeah, those are hard to file, <laughs> put in the file i need something on paper so we need um got it paper. we'll do okay thank you okay so i'll make a motion on the stream stat change to find it intermittent i have a second normal second all in favor andy i chris i norm i kevin i dennis i okay now, as far as the project goes, anybody have any comments, questions, or concerns other than uh, what kind of what kind of orders of conditions? Like, no. what do you want? Looks like the same one we approved before, without a notice of intent. So, is <laughs> Some buffers at all? What do we got? Yes. Oh, we need monuments on the buffers but at all. Where is the fifty foot buffer? Is it even in, is it in the hundred or fifty foot buffer? That's the fifty right there. Yeah. Usually that's all we require is the uh, is in the fifty right. Have we ever asked for boulders or monuments in the hundred? No. 
So really, if they're not getting, then, they're not getting into the fifty. Then, then there's a tree line there, right? Yeah, yeah. So the tree lines. The tree lines can okay. serve as a monument. Because they'd have to. They'd have to go clearing in further to put the right at the fifty. You right? don't want to do that. So just put it in <clears> the <throat> conditions that the tree tree line stays as a monument to the yeah. edge of lawn buffer. The tree line, tree line. It would make more sense in cutting the trees down and put the football. The, well, I mean, the tree probably, line in the, the southwestern or the west, southwest portion of the mm -hmm. southeast. The eastern. Yeah. Southeast, yeah. sorry. Northeast side, northeast corner. Um, okay. Wood grains or anything like that on there. Anything. Yeah, it's pretty flat area. Pretty flat. Area. I don't I, I don't think infiltration is really needed there. Not somebody else thinks so, but yes. Yeah. <clears throat> you looking for a motion then? Yeah, I'll take a motion. Everybody's ready. Right. Right. Motion with conditions. The conditions of the tree line remains as a monument and Ten thousand dollar bond. No. Okay. Well, I'll second that motion. Andy, I. Chris, I. Norm, I. Kevin, I. Dennis, I. Okay. All right. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. All right. We can move on to new slash not so new business. Our RDA 100 Berkshire Ave closed. Review and sign negative determination. Close out removal of the trees. Welcome. Thank you very much. Have a nice night. Yeah. Thank you, everybody. Is that going to be your house up there? Pardon me? Is that your house? Or you just yeah. You put, yeah. I, mean, I just want to show you guys, it's going to be a beautiful home. You know, I'm mm -hmm. not going to put a dog bitch or something you know, mm -hmm. cheap. It's going to look, it's going to be the idea. It's going to be a nice house. Oh, yeah. In Bells. Oh, and they will look beautiful there. Very nice. Very good. Super. Yeah. It'd be nice to look at them the wrong way. Great yeah. endeavor. <laughs> Thank you again, everybody. Thank you. Take care. Have a good night. Bye bye. So I have the negative determination of applicability for Norman Cheever. And then he did mention how he was accused himself. He recused himself and how he would um, do replacement plantings. So the back page of this is um, the attachment A, which I mentioned the native trees and or shrubs that um, he could choose from. And then I say, monitor replacement plantings for a minimum of two consecutive growing seasons, commencing with the first full growing season following the plantings. Um, monitor, monitoring should include assessments of survival rates, growth, and any necessary maintenance to ensure success of plantings. And after of this two consecutive growing seasons, provided that the replacement trees have survived, this condition shall be deemed satisfied. Okay. That's essentially, but you can All read right. and sign or read and not sign. Or we can just sign and not read. You just read it for us. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't here. Uh, oh, you wasn't here? That's true. You won't forget that the signature right there. Yeah. Um, that will have to come in. I could be my mint for a minute. I can sign his name. <laughs> All right. We have RDA 15 Depot Street that's closed as well. Proposed the demolition of a structure within 200 feet of the This one does not have any additional conditions added on to okay. it. Okay, then we're on to our NOI 55 Foster Road closed. We're going to be doing looking at the 
our order of conditions. Sent you guys your conditions at like five in the afternoon. Very comprehensive. <laughs> so if you want a chance to read them right here, um, we you guys do need to vote on a bond amount. That's the one thing that um, we didn't have. And then the additional ongoing conditions or any additional conditions are the very last page. Let me know if um you guys want already signed it hmm? been signed are we giving it to this is the one. this is the order of conditions for 55 foster so and you had mentioned this the additional silk fencing and the armored hay bales mm -hmm. armor that's what they call it yeah just a turn i use armored they're staked in double reinforced Oh, I see you did the research on the conservation restriction for the Sodom Mountain. Yeah, it was a declaration of restrictions, I think is what it was called. Yeah. I have a copy of it. Tannery. I think that would be a great idea. Make sure that nothing else is disturbed going on. Yeah, it was just a simple like three-page declaration that they recorded. Okay. Um, I don't know who wrote it for them, but I don't see why. AI. Right? I don't see why <laughs> um, we couldn't just copy this, switch the names yeah. and stuff. Okay. Please take the bond amount should be. I think it should be more than 10,000 because 20. of the riverfront. I think they can double it, yeah. I was just looking at that. Like Google says, a $20,000 bond is between two and 600 bucks a year. So it doesn't hurt a lot to right. have a $20,000 bond. It's not like, like it's going to cost me 1,500 bucks. Right. I think 20 is more than fair. It's reasonable. Yeah, reasonable. Yeah. Okay, is that a motion? So no. is the armor of, hay, armor of hay bales at the limit of work? Is that where you wanted to work? Limit of lawn, limit of, uh, limit of work and limit of lawn, because it should be the same. Yeah. Since so there's not much other space. Very. Um, um, houses like that, where do people go when they go out the back door? Like, you're in Oitlands, right? Yeah, you, I mean, you can, you just can't yeah. change it. Right. You can walk through it. That's kind of. I mean, that's this house and also the one over on Tannery, mm -hmm. the same thing. You see a house with no back yeah. porch or like, yeah. where's the back door? Right. That was, I had an issue with stuff that was going to go on uh, Depot Street, the same thing. Right. You know, the condos. Those houses, right. No backyard. Mm -hmm. like, right. <laughs> okay. People are going to make a backyard. I right. recall hearing about that. They were yeah. like right on it. Mm -hmm. But it's human nature to want to have a backyard, you know, their privacy, everything mm -hmm. else. You know. It's tough to monitor that. Right. But with the conservation restriction or the declaration that may make a thing twice about it. So that goes right on the deed. Yeah. Now, was that something that would come up at closing? Is that a, I had asked that of a, a couple of realtors about the house on Foster Road. Why wasn't that like the realtor's not responsible to disclose that? That's what right. the realtor's told. It would be, would be right. the lawyer and it would be part right. of the deed. Right. When they're doing their signing with their after closing, right? So this will make it that the, the yeah. new purchaser would be notified. The guy across the road said he was never notified. Yeah. Then again, as I say, when you're signing all those papers, are you listening, or are you just signing the paper to get it done with? You know what I mean? Are you? Yes. <laughs> Maybe he was told and didn't remember. That's what I'm saying. Well, he got the um, certificate of compliance, so that goes on your deed. I right. thought he was all set, but it didn't count anymore. That would be the builder, right? Not the new owner, the new, new purchaser. Owner. The new purchaser is the guy on Foster Road that cut the trees down. So nowhere in the closing would he be, have been notified of that restriction. It, that's, but this will change that, correct? Somewhere in the closing. Right. That was a new purchaser. Yeah. Yeah. And 10 years from now, the fifth new purchaser will also be notified. It should be right from the front. Yeah. Okay. So that's just a better way to go. In perpetuity. Right. So I was kind of 
amazed the realtor didn't have to disclose that. Like, mm -hmm. oh, you're buying this 10 acre lot, but you can't use that other seven acres because there's a line right, right here. Did they, they don't have the certificate of compliance before they bought the lot? They mostly at um, Foster Road. Yeah. 19 Foster. Yeah, yeah, he got the certificate. So then they said, okay, we've got to work conditions. It doesn't matter anymore. She got a certificate. It doesn't work the same way with the restriction. Except right? for the one for the ongoing conditions, it still stays. Yeah. The ongoing conditions. When we, the, any ongoing conditions that we list. I don't know how they pop up though. I assume that the order of conditions still stays with the property. When you do a um, title search, I guess, or a deed search. So we'll be redundant on this, but we might want to be redundant and yeah. put an ongoing condition in it saying that. Yeah, I don't see why it couldn't. So what do you want to say? <laughs> <laughs> I just think it's fair. It's fair for the new owner to be notified the, uh, of the problem, like a leaky basement. You have to tell them there's a leaky basement. If you know it's there, you got to tell them. But the how many realtors have you dealt with the Indians? Yeah, you don't have to tell them. When I bought our house, they told us that they didn't have to tell us about the Title V failing. So that right. depends who you're dealing with. Right. But yeah, I would put it in there ongoing condition that the whatever it's going to be called covenant or whatever is an ongoing condition remains in effect. Perpetuity, but, but we can put it, put it see if it sticks. And it should be anyway. I mean, not changing. It should be, yeah. Okay. So the armored hay bales of the of work and an ongoing condition. And and I think he suggested roof drains, but that probably should make sure that's on there too. I did. I put it um you get a chance to really look too close. Um we put it so there was the installation of dry wells to infiltrate stormwater roof runoff must be installed before the certificate of compliance is issued. The amount and placement of these dry wells must be approved by the conservation commission. Perfect. Okay. And then the monuments in quotation or in parentheses, do not disturb markers shall be placed on the limit of work line to act as a permanent marker for the limit of work of the parcel in its entirety. Monuments and their placement shall be approved by the commission before a certificate of compliance is issued. Mm -hmm. And then I'll add those two. Yeah. What I, I wrote, a declaration of restrictions pursuant to the order conditions as approved by the conservation commission with a strip with the restriction on the 200 foot riverfront area on the entirety of the parcel as agreed to by Patricia Stafford, who's the current owner, and Anatoly yeah. Anatoly, um, who's the applicant, shall be in place before work starts on this order of conditions. Yep, perfect. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, on the bond, twenty thousand. We we're talking about twenty thousand. Yeah, and we have all the standard order conditions, the DEP orders. Right? Yeah, and that's, that's right. Right. Anybody have anything else they want to add? No. I'll make a motion that that becomes part of our order of conditions. I have a second. I'll second that. All in favor? Andy, aye. Chris, aye. Nor am I. Kevin, aye. Kevin, aye. Okay. I think I signed it right. Right. I didn't sign it. You did? No, did not. Here. And don't. Did Andy sign it since he was a part of the uh, order conditions? You guys decided that at the last meeting I wasn't here. They closed the, oh, the order conditions is right now. Okay. I think that's how it's going to happen. Yep. Yeah. So we're just going to have them. Yeah. You already have them. Right? <laughs> right. Right. Well, we don't need one that they can get busy. That's right. Okay.
request for certificate of compliance on uh, 115 Fred Jackson Road. Uh, so I'll recuse myself as a conservation commissioner. I just have a few questions. We've been going back and forth on some stuff for the um, as built. The replication area, that, like Levac was thinking that they need to do a full topo there. Back when we did it in 2021, October 2021, Ryan has an email stating that all of the grades were achieved. There was hydrology and everything would be a working wetland. Do we, do you guys, would you be looking for a full topo of that? Or since they actually already, they brought control out of their state that, and Brian was there present when we, you know, did all the work. Is a topo necessary or then basically, I mean, he already stated it in an email and sent it to the commission. Like I had, so I, I gave that to the asked for a topo before. I have never seen one. Um, I mean, as long as you got something in writing, I mean, that's what we're looking for. Now looking yeah. for any maps or anything, just something in writing. Just stating that it's built per plan. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> You guys don't want an as built plan. Well, we have we we're, we're they're making as built, but the as built won't have like actual Details like a, a, the topo. A, a, a topo on it. It's, it's, the it's built for it's anything. built for plan. Oh, 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 like they have a benchmark out there that yeah. we went off of when they originally staked it out, and mm -hmm. it was built, you know, off of yeah. that elevation. Yeah, that's how we generally ask. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Unless the DEP asks for something different. Well, different. that's the one thing that Ryan isn't sure if, if DEP would want a, an actual topo. Well, you're, but that's not you. You can't answer that. Conservation, right? Well, just, there's a form on water still, so yeah. so I don't know if they will ask for it or not. But we're not gonna we're gonna table anyways. I just wanted to, for today. Next thing I do, visit. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So we we scheduled for Wednesday at three. Right. For that certificate of compliance. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. We're not. We're not. Looking so we'll find it. out what this. You know, if it's a state regulation or not. Yeah. We okay. can't override state regulations. Yes, yeah. but. Um. Okay. So how does that work? Because it's with, so there's a four one water quality certificate for this. Yeah. And you guys need to also contact them for a certificate of compliance? Correct. So so I don't Ryan doesn't think that it matters who goes first. Oh, okay. Separate. So it's separate. Yeah. I don't yeah. do I don't right. contact. Do, okay. do you I need one sure. for the 401? Do you think maybe Ryan was talking about? That's what he isn't sure if they wouldn't okay. request. But you know. Uh, okay. All right. That might be the yes. question that's there again. Yeah. Okay. So okay. but all we need is something in writing saying that it was done. Yeah, for plan. Yeah, okay. A statement, right? Okay, request for certificate of compliance, thirty-two Beach Road. There's no update no on movement. that. Okay, is, is that the? Oh, the no, one with the wall. The wall, yeah. About yeah. the issues with the wall. So um, there's the the uh, builder passed away. They're supposed to get an engineer to. Oh right, that was a very tall. Do you know? Do you know Whitehead's uh, right work? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So that's again tables. Uh, possible master plan open space action norm. Yes. Uh, really sent out the package uh, to you ahead of the meeting. Uh, this is for potential uh, resolution of the land resource or open space resource 1.1, which was create and distribute a pamphlet to all lakefront property owners. And it went on. Uh, mm -hmm. to give some depth. So I put together a draft of what that flyer might look like. And uh, I was looking for comments on the draft, the direction you'd like to go, if any changes you'd like to make. Um, if you don't think I'm on track, fine. Uh, but I think it's so there's two separate ones, one for Connecticut and one for Massachusetts. Well, it would be all in the same pamphlet, but the, we would separate. And it would say specifically Massachusetts yeah. is this, the rules for Massachusetts are this, the rules for Connecticut are this, and the rules for the lake are, and the rules for the lake are this. Okay, and uh, looking to get endorsement from 
obviously our CONCOM, Suffield CONCOM, and both select boards. I think that would make it more mm -hmm. Basically, believable. Reach out to people yeah. so they can't say they didn't know yeah. that these are the... But the goal is to get to maximize the different tasks that are allowed in each category mm -hmm. with a permit, without a permit. And not at all. It's going to be hard to get them all in there. Well, but but I, I put down what I, I came up with. Generalized. You've got additional. I'd like to add them. So I'm throwing it out for your comments on where we go from here. So this is a, um, a draft for a pamphlet to be sent out to all of the lakefront owners? Yes. And so this could be sent out when we send out the first LPP um mailing with the applications correct correct okay i put a i put a, a schedule together that allowed us to make that a very tight schedule um but i think it's doable if we keep our uh, our nose to the grindstone it's like telling people you can't put leaves in the lake and stuff yeah. like that yeah probably don't know any better best practice no fertilizer in the lawn like yeah don't dump any poisons in the lake. And yeah. Common sense stuff. Too. Yeah. Well, you think. You would think you know, common sense. And it will also point out the, the differences between the two states. <laughs> so, mm -hmm. Are you looking for a motion on this tonight, or are you just looking for... Well, if you, if you... I think we could review it, maybe add or edit or, you know, give some feedback. I haven't really looked at it in full. Okay. I'll be glad to. I have not looked at it. So. Okay. But I, I like the idea. You want to vote on the idea? No. <laughs> no, that's all right. So why don't we individually send me your comments, additions, changes. Okay. And I'll incorporate them and bring it back for our next meeting. Mm -hmm. How about that? Sounds so, great. Okay. And you got a book from Lake Management on that already. What's that? Input from Lake Management on that already. Uh, they haven't seen it yet. They'll see it Thursday night. Okay, okay we'll go on to old business. I'll call it Baker Shore and South Pond, Griffin Road. That's where the town of Suffield has their outfall from the uh, from Griffin Road into the lake. Um, any, any news on that? I forget how where we left off on this. I know I sent something to Mark Stinson and DEP, and he told me that we should treat it as any other violation. So we should send a violation notice to the town of Suffield. <laughs> okay. Uh, circle back with Randy, see where he stands on it right, right. now. Right. If we'll we check got in any more assessors, board as well. I mean, any more. Um, so then with all this common, would, would ultimately you make him move it or just go? Hmm. I mean, they're going to move it a couple feet, and it's still going to dump in the lake. Right? Well, let's make sure the surveyors got everything correctly too, yeah. because I've seen surveyors not agree on things. Right. But, um, it's going on for years, so we don't want to start the the war over the lake again. So. <laughs> All right. Okay. So any movement, uh, let's, let's look at request for LMC to resolve dock situation at 129 North Lake. So we dock seating over 600 square feet. Yes, uh, I did get a copy of the deed that Harris owns the property lot 46 that I showed you last time. And Despart has an easement on Harris property to have their central system. Okay. And then I drafted two letters, one to the Harris family, one to the Despart family, saying that, uh, and you got copies of it that was sent out by Julie, okay. um, basically saying that you will be compliant to the 600 square foot maximum by we still don't know who actually owns the waterfront, though, right? The, the strip along the land where the, the Lily are. Drive. Lily Drive. We don't know who owns that. And we suggested that the homeowners go take that. It's there's called derelict roads, and they've done it before, and they've gone out with Levesque and said, "Okay, 
This hasn't been used in many years. We're going to add it to our property. And it's called the Derelict Roads. And Derelict they could law? Yeah. do that so that we have a clear understanding of whose property that we're dealing with. Because it's waterfront property. I'm sure they're getting taxed on waterfront property. But if you go to the assessor's office, we ask they're not going to give you anything in writing and saying that, that where that property belongs to. So they need the homeowners themselves Despards, Harris's need to go get that straightened out, or we can't give them a permit period for anything. They have to prove they own the property, give yeah. them a permit. So, but where the really way goes across all of those houses and right. all those houses, not anymore permits. because some of the people have gotten the derelict roads and taken right. that over. That's it, it went all the way over. And isn't to, some uh, of Lily Way now actually underwater? I think part of it is. Yes, I believe it is. It's not a real road. So it's, I mean, well, we know it's not a real road, but I mean, part of what was the leeway is now underwater. So their property does go to the waterfront. Yeah. Okay. So it's not the same for every parcel there. It's, it can be different. I'd like that, to get that straightened out. You know, yeah, once this has all, been a pain for, for a long time. It, it's it not goes all the way to the toll path. We've, we've had Lily this way itself. Really well, the Does over by oh, sorry, go ahead. Sorry, the, there's a couple of houses on North Lake Ave, which they have a portion of Lily Way right. there, and um, we've been giving them, you know, permits, and it's basically derelict law, yeah, because, you know, it's a, an abandoned road. It's um, Lee Hamburg came in a couple weeks ago and kind of gave me the story on how that area came about. Um, he can tell the story way better than me, but ultimately it was like a, a towpath or something around the lines of towpath and then the area well, ended up getting tow killed. towpath that came all the way around. Yeah. And that turned into Lily Way. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So yes. it's, it's no man's land right now. Mm -hmm. um, but I don't everything. think it would cost them that much or take that much energy to actually put that on their deed so they actually own the properties. So without owning the property, they can have no docks there. Is right. that what well, I'm kind of getting out of it? So, so it's going to be great you. motivation to so that. You have to do, right, go do that. Take yeah. care of this because right now they cannot have a dock. And we made somebody else do it, so it's not fair to make one person do it, right. not everybody. So now I, I can't issue the permits for the North Lake Ave residents either? Right. The ones that are on Lily Way, right? And some of those... We're up on top of the hill. Mm -hmm. And we make a fight over it. We don't want that to happen. So we Did we do something a few years back? I know that we agreed that those people had right to, to the water there. So about the towpath? But, yeah. Where they put up the gate, they wouldn't let people go past. Mm hmm the town said it was okay. Right. Yeah. So isn't, wouldn't that be under the same premise? The, the towpath was something different than the Lily Way. Okay. It stops. The Lily Way starts where the towpath ends. All right. And mm -hmm. I forget whose house that's in front of, but that's another. Yeah. How far does the Lily Way go? Is it only in North Town? Yeah, yeah. Let's see if I can bring it up right now. So we may may be taking multiple docks off the off North Pond. I would, uh, you know, it's not fair to do it for one person, not everybody. So tell them to get it straightened out if they want to have a dock out there. <laughs> That's gonna, gonna be, a... be a rough year next year. <laughs> We've got Find all of these houses. All of them. Hold on. You can't see what I see. <laughs> Let me just yeah, share that. Um, um, share my screen. Share. There. So here. So I, I think this is the beginning. Of, this right here, I think, is what you meant with the towpath, the association that goes into the North Pond. The towpath is see this line right here. From the toll path ends, I believe. And then this is part of Lily Way. Yeah. And then Lily Way starts back up right here. Oh, no, no, I'm wrong. That's Lily right. Drive. This is where Lily Way starts down here. Lily Drive. 
So is Lilyway not on Death's Part Zone? Death's Part not on the map, she thought. They they what uh, their docks are on it. Two of their docks. Right. Are on no, that's one of them, and then the other two are next to it. Can you zoom in? Yeah. So one of their docks is here, and what is it? The other. Oh. I wonder. Let me see. But that line is where Lily Lewis starts. Or right. Lily yeah. So, uh, so up here is this? Is this the? Oh, well, it's been la yeah. lagged. Is that the towpath you're talking about? Yeah. Yeah. So what's going on? So can we issue them? And this is permits the right away from the towpath that goes up. So can we issue permits? Built on that, I believe too. Yeah. Can we issue permits yeah. for the towpath? Because technically those people don't have water front then is what you're uh, saying. The towpath, there was a a legal document when they they built North Pond Estates. Right. Oh yes. So except for 141. 141. Except for 141. Okay, yes. now I remember. Now I remember. Pinky's got it, I believe. Yep. How far south is this really go? Just down to right here at 60 Lake Munch Street, it looks like, unless but I, I think some of these docks down here aren't even on aren't even on these properties. They go some of these docks to the local folks are in North Lake Avenue. Um, so we're saying because they don't own the land on Lily Drive, they cannot have a dock. It's always been my impression. Oh, mm -hmm. so what's in the LPP? I mean, you have to have landowners' permission or own the land to be able to put right. it That's what there. we're doing over in Suffield at that exactly. you know, the town land over there. The same thing. Same thing. So, Willie Drive is owned by the town. No. Willie Drive is abandoned. Abandoned. It's um, a derelict road. UND. Nobody claims, claims it. I did know what you and me stood for, but I don't so remember. They go claim it, and they can have it, and we can solve this whole thing. Whoever abuts the properties. So, could the town just handle an an a, an a abolish it? No, I'm saying abolish it. Like, otherwise, instead of having all the property, property owners, owners every, every single property owner has to, to do it. it yeah. Every single one. As far as I know, yeah. It's, like why couldn't the town just like say, all right, we this is something that I'm assuming well, the town created it. No. I think no, it's a private developer created it. Oh. But also I think what would happen is their taxes might go up and they might opt out of that. You know so it's, mean? Up, so it's up to it's they're, up to pretty them. sure they pay. Oh, I'm sure they do. Tax <laughs> yeah. Yeah. They have water view. But they'll have more square <laughs> footage. So the the value of the land goes up. All right, are they paying taxes on that whole land all the way down to the wire? So if we could dig up the document to find out how the who who was it that did that? Was that Sine that did the derelict road or he may have. Dig up the document. He's on the corner there, right? Did Johnson A. Uh isn't he wait, where am I? I think over here. Um Lake Mont, isn't he down Lake Mont? Right here. So this is his slot, I think, right? Okay. That's yeah, that's possible. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Got that name? So there's more work to be done. <laughs> okay. All right. I'm stopping my sharing. We'll leave it under old business. <laughs> yeah, there we go. 855 Sunnyside Road, possible unpermitted work and alteration in the resource area. I haven't gotten anything from them okay. yet. And also that dead tree on North Pond Conservation Property. I have not finalized that. Okay. Better Update yet. on 13 Berkshire land donation. Um, actually, Julie, oh. do you have an update for um this is for 13 Berkshire? We had a bill to pay oh, yes. six thousand something. Um, she did it by something. Or something. 
How much does you have to have a purchase order now for anything over six thousand? Everything over three thousand. Three thousand. But I mean, we've done we've dealt with purchase. So order. write out a request for purchase order for the Woody account. Yeah, she said it was oh. approved. Oh, it was approved. It's in the mailbox. In the okay. Okay. Yeah. okay. Right. Just, Excellent. In the mailbox. All right. We, we skipped over the Loomis South Loomis to re South Loomis request for certificate of compliance. Oh, I still have to write. Oh, go ahead. If you want to because um, they didn't bring the correct uh, pictures to the last meeting. And they had actually put the topsoil, the three inches of it, and planted. And uh, it was definitely growing and established, but it didn't look like it. Mark said he put grass mix on top of the wetland mix, so it looks like the grass might have taken over. Oh. So that's the only issue now, I would see. It. I, yeah. The, the topsoil is graded out. Okay. Um, did you uh, write anything to the? Uh, no, not yet. Um, do you want me to? The only thing that we need to see is that uh, is that what we need to see is wetland plants growing there. Is that? Yeah. Well, there was also the the two growing seasons portion and, uh, of it, which is because he said he planted a tree, but it turned out to be invasive, and they had the, yeah, the Norway maple. <laughs> I didn't even notice, so he replaced it with the red maple. <laughs> Yeah, the nursery gave him the wrong tree. But yeah, you could just give them a nice email saying everything looks good. Just need the two growing seasons to show that the wetland vegetation has been established. Right, and the letter should suffice, I would hope, too. No so everything mm. looks good. Wetland mix established. Okay, we have proposed amendments to the local permitting program requested by a select board, Chief of Police, Harvard Master, Diane Gale to move with the site forward. I have no update on that yet okay. from the state. Any report from the Suffield presentation on LPP? Uh, supposedly, the one remaining issue uh, was we needed to provide a document that says they can't have a, a permanent member of their conservation commission. Supposedly, Jason Perone has that document. I asked him for it, and I asked him for an update, but I didn't get one. So I don't know any more than that. Okay. It's right in the Wetland Protection Act. Isn't it? Yeah, it's just, you can't live outside of the town. It's you have people that move it beyond the commission itself. It's right. pretty specific. It's, it's in the Wetlands Protection Act. It's, it's in it the, is. the not the mm, not three ten CMR, is it? It's, it's in not in that one. one. So um, what is it? Chapter here? I can't remember it. I never refer back to it. I was getting touch with MACC. Yeah. Find out yeah. Well, Jason, hopefully Jason's got it and we'll, we'll give it to me shortly. That should be easy to get. You can't hand it over. We can probably write online. Okay, report from the Southfield CONCOM meetings. Yes, this is an interesting one. Uh, let's see, it'll be two weeks ago tomorrow they had a meeting and at 3.30 in the afternoon I just happened to check their agenda and it was a retaining wall at 261 Lakeview Terra, Lakeview Drive uh, on the agenda and it said to accept. <laughs> so I quickly put together about 17 questions. I consulted Dennis and Sabrina. I uh, went to the meeting with my list of typed questions, pictures to show them. And what I learned at the meeting is acceptance means they're just accepting it into their, into the, into oh, okay. their, their process. Okay. Yeah. And at the next meeting would be a public hearing. Oh, oh, there would be a hearing, and I asked if it would be a public hearing, and I was told no. Please send my questions and pictures to Keith, and uh, he'll distribute them. And which which I did, and then and Keith said that uh, he had visited the site, whether or not he took my list of questions or not, because I mean it's a real steep slope, no access. Mm -hmm. you know, how do we get equipment in there? And, um, but anyways, he texted me back saying the land, the homeowner has withdrawn the application <laughs> for retaining wall. Oh, okay. Oh, oh, oh. So I don't know if my, my questions are going to have or not. But, <laughs> uh, but anyways, uh, that one was a little scary. Uh, and another meeting tomorrow night, but nothing on the agenda but the pig farm. 
<laughs> All right. So that's that. Super. Good job. Okay, Noble Speed Subdivision. Uh, I don't think there's anything new going on there. Is there? I think wasn't there some question about our certificate of compliance? Or... Well, I mean, I'm not exactly sure what that was about. I haven't gotten a hold of Jesse yet, but um, Jason had reached out to me to give Jesse a call. He said that the sale of one of his houses was pending and had something to do with conservation. So I'm anticipating that maybe there's not a certificate of compliance for that parcel for that house. Which makes sense. That's holding up the sale. It just needs to. So you'd have to come in and get, you know, request the certificate request of compliance. Certificate. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's how it's done, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. They have a thing called a request for a certificate. Of <laughs> so that was what we would have to do. If indeed that's what it is. Okay. And then we have possible wetland violation 31 Sam West Road. Did you get an email from Butch? Oh, that's that. Mm, I'm right. supposed to put something in writing that they did. Let's see. Well, that said, uh, they, that. they pulled the they pulled the silt out of there and revegetated. Mm -hmm. It's mm -hmm. the way it should be. I haven't gotten anything from him since a year ago. Yeah. I talked to him earlier in the week, so or last week, so mm, nothing yet. No one has gotten anything yet, unless he has a different email now. Circle back to three south limits for a second. Is there a bond on that? Yes. So it might be reasonable to let the bank know that you're going to require that the bond be held until you release it, and that'll assure the bank that it'll be done correctly. If that's my understanding, right? You're sending this note. How much is the bond for? Ten thousand. We could release part of the bond. But what I'm saying is, the bank wants reassurance that it was done and it was done correctly. But we're also giving them that it's got to we got to look at it for two years, and the ten thousand covers the two. If there's a problem in two years, there's money to correct it. The bank's not on the hook, nor is the new buyer. You see, it, it, you've got to give the bank the assurance that the problem right. is solved, and if it's not solved, there's money to solve it. It's not going to get dumped back on the new guy. So, at, just to add that like note to the right letter, right to the bank that. There's money to fix a problem if it occurs within we that two years. Assurance. Right, right. Because we're asking Mark and the guy to warranty their work, but there's money to pay somebody. If these guys don't come do it. We can hire someone else. Thank you. They, they keep paying the bond. Right. Mm -hmm. Oh, we got a notice today um, that a, a bond is going to be canceled because it hasn't been paid for. And I love those. Because they don't give any information on the NOI number, on the applicant. On, like Julie this morning was trying to figure out, she was making calls, trying to figure out who it's for. That should go to the treasurer. She should. I go, asked, I asked Jess, and she's like, I don't know what this is for. I find like, out. Love, it's, like... It's, all, it's all under the treasurer. <laughs> I said, she's the one that keeps track of the bonds. And... Mm. They're, they're worthless if they run out. I mean, it's... So can you. I would assume that you could buy a two-year bond if we're going to require that you watch something for two years. We're also going to require a two-year bond. Or if you're going to watch it for five years, we need a five-year bond. Well, the bond would stay it until, stay until the you know, certificate of compliance is issued. Unless they don't pay it. So, right. So if you have a, a two-year period in which you're supposed to monitor the wetlands, and if it's a, that, we don't actually do the bonding. That all goes through the treasurer's office. So right. We have to go through them and make sure that it was done. But we put the requirements of the bond. We require $20,000. Right. They, they get a copy of that one for, for when they get the bond years. that goes to the treasurer. Right. So like if, there, if we have a certain like period of growing seasons and we know that we can't issue a certificate of compliance before this date, like a safety measure you would need the bond to be purchased in advance for that block of time especially if it's going to change ownership and everything else it's like buying a bond and insurance policy you're just going to pay it those two years in advance so it's, it's there forever so even if all the principals involved move to florida the bond's still here and can pay for the fix yeah.
something to think about in the next project because we yes. can't change anything now. Right. <laughs> Well, they require that when you have the bond posted, the treasurer requires we give them the order of conditions, and that's written right on there. And they see what the order of conditions are, and they keep track of it because they we're not to keep track of the bonds. Yeah, we're not. I'm not. Mm -hmm. Who's the treasurer now? Is that yes. Jesse? Yeah. So we'll have to get more information. They gave us it's like a uh, November fourteenth, I think, is when time is up on that one. So. We tried this morning to figure it out and couldn't. We're going to have to keep working on it. That's where you get paid the big bucks. That's why I had to pay the big bucks. <laughs> All right. I think we'll work our way back to our minutes. Yes. Um, under report from Southfield presentation on the LPP. I'm going to type this up and send it to Julie because. Okay. Basically, it's going to say that um, the independent audit issue has been resolved. If we can produce a document that says we cannot have a Suffield representative on our CONCOM, they will accept the liaison approach. All right. Okay, I'll type that up. Thank you. You get a few modules. Maybe we should have voting members. I mean, voting members. Yeah. Yeah. That's the only issue is that. The voting member part. Why would you want someone from Connecticut to be a voting member in Southwick? Those are the things. No. And you mm -hmm. can't even be from Westfield and be right. a member. Right. Through that. Yeah. Hardly an issue comes up where you need to vote on an LPP issue. I don't know. Right. Okay. Make a, a motion, motion on the minutes. Mm -hmm. Motion to approve as amended. I'll second. All in favor? I was not here. I'll do no. Actually, you can vote now. We I made a motion. That was first. Oh, CPC. Was that seat? Sorry. Wrong, wrong committee. <laughs> <laughs> we could do it here too. We could. It's up to you guys. Make things easier. But we'll wait and we'll think about that, push that off to the next meeting. Got it. Uh, community preservation, we uh, made an amendment that we can. Approve minutes, even if we weren't at the previous meeting, um, as long as there's a quorum from that meeting. Okay. Um, minutes or voted ever? Yep. Chris, I, nor am I. Kevin, I. Set aside. Okay. You have a signature page? This one's pretty. Oh, then take it. Wait, is it double sided? Yes, it is. No, it's not. Do it. All right, last page. Oh. Well, you use yours. I got it. Wait, that's September 16th. <laughs> I don't have it. I don't have it. It's on a double sided paper. We don't usually yeah, yeah, we have a separate sheet. Yeah. There's nothing to correct it here, so it's fine. I'll just make up. Okay. All right. Oh, we can use this one. Yeah. 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 All right. Okay. We got. Yeah. Hmm. Okay. You can make a motion of something else they wish. Motion to adjourn. Second. Andy, I. Chris, I. Norm, I. Kevin, I. Dennis, I. We will close the meeting at eight twenty. Mm -hmm.